The founder of the Stewart Home School uh, was Dr. John Quincy Adams Stewart. Uh, a fascinating man with a fascinating life. Uh, a native Kentuckian, had a law degree by age 18, went to the gold rush in California along with his brother. A uh, courageous journey across America, a four month trip uh, and back. Used his law degree to serve as a magistrate in uh, uh, Sutter County, uh, California. Uh, when he didn't strike gold, uh, came back to Kentucky, 1858. He got married and then he went to medical school and graduated from uh, Kentucky School of Medicine in Louisville, now the University of Louisville Medical School in 1859. And he practiced in Western Kentucky. And then really the forerunner to this story is then approximately 1878, uh, Dr. John Quincy Adams Stewart was appointed by the Kentucky governor to come here to Frankfort, Kentucky and take over as the director for the State Institute for the Intellectually Disabled. That was the state's public facility. Uh, he did that through four governors, so uh, uh, was uh, uh, politically savvy. Uh, it, uh, it, it was an important post uh, and he uh, was very progressive. Uh, his programming. Um, in 1893, 1892, he, was, he retired from his state position, uh, but his motivation was to start a private school, a private residential facility, where focus could be on quality care for the intellectually and developmentally disabled. And he had approximately 16 families uh, they wanted him to proceed with this. So in 1893, he bought uh, this campus, uh, which had been Kentucky Military Institute, a military prep school. That prep school the year before had moved to Louisville, where they were uh, functional until 1971, and that military boarding school uh, closed. But as they moved to Louisville, let this campus open. So at auction, he bought what was, is now the main building and the original uh, uh, quadrangle, which is the east building and north building and annex uh, area, and started a private school. Uh, he served as Kentucky Medical Association president uh, in the 18, uh, uh, 1894 and 95. Uh, he passed away in 1898. Uh, 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 next generation, Generation 2, was his son, Dr. John Stewart, John Pogue Stewart, uh, who had just finished his medical training and took over as the uh, superintendent. And he did this for 43 years, 1898 to 1941. Uh, a builder and developer, he grew the school uh, significantly. Uh, 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 an operational expert uh, in the sense that he maintained uh, uh, the school's existence uh, through uh, challenging times, the First World War, and particularly the Great Depression uh, in the United States in the 1930s. And, and the, the doors stayed open, uh, programs continued, and in fact the, uh, the, the school, the enrollment, the facility grew. At, uh, at, at his uh, death in 1941, uh, John Dowling Stewart uh, took over, his son, uh, who's a business administrator, and uh, he ran the school uh, till 1963. Um, the uh, uh, transition at that time uh, was uh, to my father, uh, Dr. John Pogue Stewart. He returned to Frankfurt as Frankfurt's first radiologist in 1956 uh, because his father, my grandfather, uh, had health issues. So Dr. Stewart was a radiologist, but really his career focus was, a, was the Stewart Home and School. Uh, he, he was uh, a visionary person, really like our founder. Um, uh, and was also uh, uh, a builder. And he took the school at approximately 175 residents and uh, grew it to the, uh, the size that it is 
uh, today. In fact, in the 1990s, we had an even larger enrollment. The decision was made then to convert all the rooms to private rooms, except for a handful on the campus, um, whereas we were uh, almost all semi-private. Uh, but we're at approximately 335 residents uh, today. So really, he doubled it uh, in size. And the other part of that vision was the programming. We were really special ed before special ed was even a term. Uh, when I was young, there was no programming in the local school system for special education. Uh, we had those programming, th that, th that programming with those teachers and our staff and uh, uh, our activities, our recreation, uh, social uh, engagement and vocational interaction in the community all uh, have uh, developed really ahead of the curve. The, uh, the school, uh, as I said, grew in size, its campus grew, and uh, my father's partner with that has been uh, my brother-in-law, uh, Barry Banker, who uh, has been uh, our uh, initially uh, uh, chief operating officer and then our longtime uh, chief executive officer, our CEO from 1988 uh, until uh, present. And uh, he uh, has a, a, a business degree and background, uh, owned and operated a, a business, and then uh, was recruited uh, to come here uh, by my father uh, for, for a year to help us uh, um, computerize our uh, financial uh, and uh, uh, billing systems, uh, but uh, has stayed for 30. Uh, and together in the uh, 1990s, uh, essentially the whole campus was redone. Uh, the older buildings have been renovated, uh, added to, or uh, uh, changed, uh, and a number of new buildings have uh, grown as we've expanded this campus the facilities and programming uh, that we provide. Uh, that continues to this day. Uh, our last two biggest projects have been the education building in which I sit now, and as we speak, we are uh, uh, building a new uh, facility for uh, student health uh, here, here on the campus that will open up in about a month. So we have a rich history. Uh, the mission, uh, and our purpose over those 125 years is, is serving those uh, uh, adults, uh, senior adults, adults, young adults, teenagers with intellectual and developmental disabilities, uh, is to provide a uh, lifetime uh, opportunity for learning. Uh, it's also to provide a home and what I call environment of peers, where folks can live, uh, can thrive amongst their friends, and focused on the activities uh, that they enjoy and are rewarding to them uh, and to uh, each of their families. So we've had a, we've had a mission that's been uh, uh, present for five generations. If, if you look to me as generation five, um, I came, um, uh, I practiced surgery for 32 years in Lexington, but have always overseen uh, our student health and uh, have run clinics here uh, and took over uh, uh, as the uh, chairman um, uh, functionally in 2014 when my father passed uh, after his uh, approximately uh, 58 years of running things. Um, and uh, have been uh, full-time here uh, since 2016. So um, uh, the John Stewart's continue uh, for now, and the tradition continues, but the programming and the services are ever-changing, constantly modernizing, and pushing the envelope. So we uh, uh, thank anyone that has the opportunity to uh, share in this and listen to this. Uh, it's a beautiful place with beautiful people that live here and work here. We welcome each and all at any time you wish to.